Okay, thank you everyone for joining tonight and um, a special thank you to the um, Teachers Guild New South Wales and particularly the President, Dr Fred Osman, for hosting the webinar tonight. Um, I'll, we'll be recording this webinar and it'll be available on the Teachers Guild New South Wales website as a resource. I'd like to go through um, about 10 slides just to give an overview of how and why the Family Book Form technology is a valuable resource for teachers to use with their students as an alternative to always using Word or Google Docs for writing assignments. So it doesn't matter what the subject is, the students don't need to use a blank page. They can use my template page instead. I'll show some case studies of how students have used my tech in their classrooms and how these teachers um, have won awards and are presenting their projects at conferences around the world um, and publishing valuable education research. This is because when students use my template page, they achieve so much more than just writing improvement. They have transformational learning and documentation of that learning. After my slides, I'll give a demonstration of the book creating dashboard, and I'll show you how you and your students can use this technology for many different curriculum aligned lessons. So let's get started. Education is a very busy space and it's undergoing rapid change as teachers and students evolve to use more and more technology. And this has been speeded up lately with the need to go completely online with the COVID pandemic. Education has typically been about filling young people up with all the information, facts and techniques they'll need to face the world. But now education is more about blending the filling of students with content and fueling students' ideas, passions and being relevant to their rapidly changing world and future workplaces. Engagement can be very difficult as students have access to anything online now. How do we as educators compete with the excitement of online games, social media and content on demand? Many people ask me why my technology is for family communication projects. And the reason is that it, it's specifically to address the need to engage students in activities that are as exciting and emotional as those other distractions and recruiting as many people as possible to help you in the student's education as well. Research shows that when families are involved with their child's learning, those young people will always do better, not just academically, but in everything. I particularly wanted high school students to do these story collecting projects with their families because it's specifically in the early teenage years that kids start turning away from their families and more towards their peer groups for creating personal connections and developing their values and identities. And that's a little bit like the blind leading the blind. The Family Book Form technology scaffolds activities to bring students back to their families, ideally in face-to-face -face communication, which is in dire need for these teenagers nowadays. Schools have been getting students to interview their grandparents or someone special in their life for decades. We all know the huge cross-curricular and social-emotional benefits from doing this, but usually it's in primary school and the process is quite amateurish. Kids handwrite and maybe draw or glue pictures onto a big piece of cardboard, which is hard to share and not valuable for long. So I wanted to automate the whole process for the teacher, the students and the families to make it more of a 21st century activity using technology as a tool. So students can achieve much more than they traditionally could by themselves. And they create a polished end product that teachers can give feedback and a grade. Students can include in their portfolios for reflection and proof of learning. And books have longevity and value to the families and community. So the curriculum requires students to use technology as a tool, not just substitution for pen and paper. So teachers can also use technology as a tool to ensure students are using tech as a tool, especially in the recent crisis of online lessons, remote learning, and ensuring students are even learning anything at all. Teachers can't be hands-on and instructing students at all times. So using technology as a plug-in solution trusting that it adheres to privacy requirements and frameworks like SAMA or the ESTE standards allows teachers to give agency to the students to personalize their learning, differentiate for their ability and collaborate with others. And the whole experience leads to transformational learning specific to that student. So students have many documenting tools to choose from nowadays and as part of the curriculum, they're supposed to use a variety. But for writing, they mainly just use Word or Google Docs, which has limits. A blank page can be very daunting. 
students, students always struggle with where to start, how to structure, and how to create original content from scratch with their limited ability or life experience, and without copying and pasting from the internet. The family book form dashboard is similar to the physical workbook students used to use with a question and answer box, but with all the modern day scaffolding students have become used to. Similar to any online game students play nowadays, the instructions are built in. Like how Minecraft and Scratch have been incorporated into class lessons for the fun and education of the process. Students can work independently following the prompts and collecting original content into a digital format. They can differentiate by using the speech to text or contributions from others and all the content is automatically formatted into a polished book. But it's more than just a book, it's documenting their experiential learning. Sort of like how online games guide you on an exciting journey of tasks and rewards, this technology is also about the emotional and educational journey as well as the prize at the end. Students have agency to collect content important to them, and they have fun bonding with their family while doing it. Then they can share in the class lessons, sort of like a modern day show and tell, and students can take turns to play their audio files. So not everybody has grandparents or extended family, and this is a great opportunity for everyone to enjoy authentic storytelling and hear real migration stories or life from different places or perspectives, and that really enriches lessons. So for example, if this is a literacy lesson, the curriculum states that students need to identify and explore ideas and viewpoints about events, issues, and characters drawn from different historical, social, and cultural contexts, and reflect on ideas and opinions about characters, settings, and events in each other's texts. And in the classroom, they can collaboratively edit the text as well. Or if it's history, Students' authentic content can relate to migration or conflict or people's lives from different areas and places. Or as a research project, this is primary source original content. Students can't copy and paste this information from the internet. It doesn't exist. And that's why it's so valuable. And they are emotionally connected to their content. So they're more interested to make it a polished end product that they are proud to give to their families and their families would treasure. So as a teacher, you don't need to be the only person trying to motivate your students. They've potentially got their whole family and community motivating them to complete the project and do a good job. So now I'd like to share some case studies of how teachers have used the family book form technology in their classes instead of using Word or Google Docs. So this is Blakehurst High School did the COVID-19 and Me collaborative class book. It was for English enrichment in year seven, and the teachers controlled the books and invited each student to contribute a chapter on their feelings, experiences, and photos on being restricted to home during a pandemic. The teacher said students were very conscientious about wanting to write because they realized the significance and value of their primary source documentation of a historical event. They were very excited that their published book could be included in their school's library and be of value to future generations. The teacher is presenting this case study at Edutech in Sydney and Singapore and was published in the ISTE Spring Literacy Journal. Another exam example is as a STEAM class book, the arts teacher wanted to blend art and technology. So this class created a Mother's Day book where each student wrote a poem and painted or drew pictures of their mothers and uploaded into their family book form dashboard. They worked in class and at home over four weeks. The book could be posted online on the school newsletter and website and printed on demand. And the teacher published STEAM research and presented at conferences in Canada and Australia. The favorite recipe book is a popular project. It can be a collaborative class book where each student contributes their favorite recipe into the class's favorite recipe book, or students can create their own family's personalized recipe book. This can address various curriculum requirements, especially such as a research project or collecting migration or cultural stories. Students work synchronously and asynchronously at their own pace in class or at home. The end book is a popular fundraiser for the school too, as families value the end book product. Similar to buying their child's photo each year, they buy their family's personalized recipe book, a much better option to selling chocolate or cookies every year. 
The Champagne Catholic Boys High School in Sydney had identified a lower than usual literacy level in their year seven cohort. They wanted to address this and try to improve the family engagement at the school as well. They used MyTech for their English life writing unit where students had to write a biography or autobiography. And instead of writing onto a blank Google Doc, students used the Family Book for temp template page to either speak their story or interview others using the speech to text. And they could invite other family members to contribute content like ancestry information and photos directly into their book too. Some students had relatives that spoke other languages and this usually limited their conversations. So the student could use technology as a tool to collect the story in that person's native language and translate and transcribe directly into their book. Students that could barely write a paragraph at the start of the project presented their printed books to their families at a book presentation ceremony. They spoke about the fun and hearing about their family members' lives, especially when they were teenagers. The students were so proud to present their books to their families, and the director of learning at that school will publish pioneering boys' literacy research next month. And they are embedding MyTech into their school literacy program because of the inbuilt scaffolding for personalization and differentiated ways to collect and write content into a polished end product of value. This last example is of year nine students. They were a mix of extension English and history students and some were doing for a community service. They went into two aged care homes and were paired with a resident and the students interviewed their resident once a week for an hour over two, 10 weeks using my platform. At first, the students were awkward. They're teenagers. They were nervous and didn't know what to ask. So some students hadn't even been exposed to older people before or people from another country. But they followed the template questions to get the conversation started. They could use the speech to text to record the answers and stories. So they didn't need to worry about trying to write fast enough or get all the details correct. They could relax and enjoy the interaction. This is fantastic active listening practice and role playing an interview scenario, vital for students to rehearse before going for job interviews. So over time, they gained confidence and then started asking their own questions. Back at school or at home, the students could access the recorded content to edit and format into their book. They could also invite the resident's own family members, adult children and grandchildren, to automatically contribute stories and photos into their relative's book too. It's an easy way for students to collate a lot of dispersed original content into a mod modern format. One thing that was amazing, even though these older people were strangers to the students, the students all said how privileged they felt that they were being trusted to put this precious information together for that family. They all felt very responsible and motivated to make sure they did a good job. In the classroom, the students could share the audio stories with peers who were not attending the aged care. The students loved taking charge and sharing their resident stories with everyone, and they all enjoyed hearing the real voices about a teenager's life 50 or so years ago. And with the help of the teacher, they had discussions relating to the curriculum objectives and polished the content into better writing. The aged care business sponsored this project, so this is a way for students to monetize their time and sell the books to those families. We had two presentation ceremonies with hundreds of students, residents and their families, staff and teachers. And the students spoke about their particular moments during the process that was special to them as they presented their residents memoir to them. There wasn't a dry eye in the place. And everyone said to me after, why isn't this project in every school in the world? And with this sort of technology, that can become a reality. This project generated national television twice on Channel 7 and newspaper coverage and the King's School posted on their Facebook, and that footage had over 80,000 views. This is fantastic public relations and marketing for schools. There's a lot of talk lately about Black Lives Matter and domestic violence and extreme points of view and cultural misunderstandings. It is story sharing and communication projects like this that scaffold young people to develop vital communication skills, empathy, and collaborate with others to build a broader worldview. So this is the end of the slides. I'd like to um, go now to the book creating dashboard and show you um, how as a teacher you can assign as a project and, and, what, te and what students would see. So if you go to the familybookform.com website, uh, there is a 
one minute video here that you it shows an overview um, and you can scroll down and there's some example book projects here. So for example, this was the STEAM book that the Marina Regina Catholic School did. So this is where the um, arts teacher collated all the students' poems and stories about their mother into um, a Mother's Day book. The principal wrote an introduction for the book. The teacher contributed a chapter about her research on STEAM and we documented the process. And then each child had their um, chapter or their double page spread in the book. So this was a great way to showcase uh, what the teachers were doing, what the school is doing, and um, the it documented tangible learning products from what those students were learning within the classes. So the, the parents were pleased to be able to see what their child was actually learning in school. This digital book could be posted on um, the school newsletter and on the website and um, printed on demand uh, for the parents that did want to have a, print, a tangible printed book. So... Uh, the other example is the family recipe book. So this is a, uh, a year seven student did this book and invited her family members to contribute recipes and stories. And so she wrote the introduction about her family and it was about the grandma coming from Europe, her famous bouillabaisse. And so each family member was able to directly contribute the content into her book and um, she could edit that. This is the German version here. And each book is um, can be showcased in the classroom. They can be put up on the smart board and they can collaboratively edit the content or do a, a sharing of their, their content. This is the memoir book as an example. And so whatever content is put into the dashboard automatically propagates into chapters and sections into the contents page here. So there are lesson plans that you as a teacher can download and follow. There's testimonial from a, a teacher in uh, California who did a project with homeschools and gifted children. And so this is, was especially beneficial to enrich her lessons because she never meets her students. And so it's all done online and particularly topical at the moment with remote learning and online learning. So this, uh, this teacher was able to enrich her lesson with the students' uh, st real stories. There's case studies here, and um, these are case studies that have been presented around the world. So you can see all that. It's free for a teacher to sign up. Um, only teachers can sign up here and uh, go through to a dashboard. And in the dashboard, that is where you can invite students. So students cannot sign up until a teacher has invited them with the link. Um, so the teacher can sign up for free here, use the Google sign up or email, and you can skip through to your dashboard and uh, create a free demo book to try it out. So I'll sign on in here. And when you first land in the dashboard, it will be um, clear. So there'll be no projects there because you haven't created a project yet. This is a project that I have generated. It's the family recipe book. And so when you um, first land here, you can go to a demonstration book and I'll show you that in a second. But as you create projects, um, you can buy licenses and the license is $10 for a book. So if you're going to do a collaborative class recipe book, for example, that's $10 for that book and then you can invite your whole class or whole year group to contribute content and chapters to that book. So as you create a project, it automatically generates um, a project, uh, a unique URL here. That is the URL for that project. So whether you buy one license or 10 licenses or 100 licenses, it generates one URL for that project. And that is the URL that you share with the students. Um, so you can share that through Google Classroom, but if you don't use Google Classroom, you can just copy and paste and share that with students however you would normally communicate with them. You're able to see in this dashboard what students have redeemed the licenses and you are able to access their books to give feedback. So here we'll go to the demo, the demo book and you can see exactly what you would use to invite the students to contribute to your collaborative class book 
or what the student would see when they're going to create their own book, whether it's their family's book or they go into the community and collect other people's stories. <clears throat> so on the left-hand side, this is the scaffolding to create the book. So first of all, it's the front cover of um, that book, and so you can name it. Um, you see the questions there and you just follow the prompts and who's the author and you can upload a photo. The next uh, uh, structure there for the book is the introduction. So here you can um, just write directly into that answer box or you can speak the story or the student can speak the story. So there's up to 200 languages here that you can choose from. Um, if the student is interviewing uh, different relatives that speak different languages, they can just go through and choose the language that uh, that relative is going to be speaking. They ask the questions, and they can start and stop the recording as much as as many times as they like. So when they've done a recording, there's a blue button here and you just click that blue button and it automatically propagates the text into this answer box into this section of the book. So this scaffolding here is for um, students to interview other people, collect content from other people. So it automatically propagates four chapters here. And this is um, the different stages of life. There's general, early years, adolescence, adulthood, and you can add more chapters if you want to. So this is the scaffolding that you can um, trust that the students can just work through the different sections of the scaffolding and it automatically um, allows them to input content into the answer boxes. So they just follow the question prompts and, and put their answer there. They can either type it um, or speak it. If you don't want the students to use the questions, they can be turned off up here. So this, the questions don't appear in the book. They're just prompts for the students. So if you turn the questions off, then there's just um, answer boxes. And this just creates a structure of different sections and chapters in the book. So if the students click on different uh, top uh, different um, chapters here, it drops down different topic suggestions. So you as the teacher might specify to your class of students to go and interview one person and ask them um, from the early years for topic, um, four topics. And so those students can personalize their learning by choosing which um, topics they want to um, uh, uh, interview the person about and each topic has different questions. And so after, at the end of each uh, topic in section, there's temp, uh, photo template pages. So they can choose to upload one photo, two or four to a page. And so this is uh, how students can personalize and, and differentiate their learning. Um, if we go back to the dashboard here, up the top here, you've got my book. And so if you click on that, this is where you or the students can uh, rearrange the chapters in the book. You can view a digital version of the book and it automatically displays whatever you have entered into that dashboard. So there's an example here of the COVID-19 and Me book. So when the students are invited to contribute to that uh, collaborative class book, they automatically propagate into here. And so back to the dashboard, you can view the digital book you can download a PDF version of the book. And so this is if you wanted to print on demand, you can download the PDF as many times as you like and print at your printer, or you can send to a local printer, or you can send me um, an email and I can get it printed for you. You can download the audio files here, and they're, they're all here, you can download here, and you can see um, what the uh, the transcription is here and if you download it this can be played in classrooms and the class can uh, collaboratively edit that content. So if you're wanting to invite students to contribute content to your collaborative class book this is you would go to collaborations and you can invite um, a whole list of students within your class or within your year or if it's students are creating their family's recipe book, they can invite family members one by one. So here they just follow the prompts of name, email, and do a personalized message. So th if this is a student, they can um, type their message here to their grandma. Can she please contribute her favorite recipe, her dumpling recipe, or maybe it's her pasta sauce. And then that invite is sent 
uh, automatically to grandma's email. So when somebody is uh, receives that link, they can uh, click on the link and sign up with their name and they create a password and they land directly on this dashboard where they can see that they um, have been asked to contribute um, content to the COVID-19 and me book, for example. They see how many words they've got. And here's the instructions here on the left-hand side. So if it's you as the teacher inviting your class, you can specify here what you want them to contribute. So here I've said 600 words, words in one photo page, for example. So students can log on and off and work at their own pace. They can upload um, photo pages. And when they're ready, they click submit. And that automatically appears in your collaborative class book. So you can view their contribution here. And once they've clicked submit, you can edit their content if needed. You can see what uh, photos they've uploaded. And so you can monitor whether that's what you want in that collaborative class book. You can make adjustments. You can also monitor which students have not submitted anything yet and you can follow up with them. In the dashboard here, the book creating dashboard, this, if students are doing it as a project at home, they can uh, access video explainers on different sections on how to do things. They can uh, seek uh, technical help if that's what they've got. And there's writing um, tips here too. So this is basically the, um, what the book creating dashboard looks like, whether you use it as a, a collaborative class book or whether you allocate it as an assignment to students to create and collect content for their book. It's uh, flexible, whether it's for the teacher or whether it's for the students. So this is um, the, basically the end of the overview of the technology. I'll break now, we'll go to questions. And I just wanna thank you for participating in this webinar tonight. And if you have any questions, you can contact me through the website that's familybookform.com. And if you do do a project, tell me about it because the teachers are um, showcasing their projects all around the world at the moment. So we'd love to hear from you. Thank you.